There is a major television event which is coming to Sky News. It will be taking place next week. It'll be on uh, Tuesday at 7pm. It is a world-exclusive interview with Kylie Moore Gilbert. Kylie Moore Gilbert is the Australian uh, academic who was accused by the Iranian state of being a spy. She ended up in solitary confinement in jail. And while all of that was happening, her life was falling apart at home as her uh, husband was seeking, well, outside of the marriage. Here's part of what you are going to see as a world-exclusive chat next Tuesday night. You were in an Iranian prison for 804 days. It made headlines right around the world. And you've never spoken publicly until now. I want to talk about what happened to me. In a world-exclusive interview with Melissa Doyle... You were essentially dobbed in by somebody. Do you know who? I do. Are you a spy? Were you ever tortured? The feeling I had in my gut was I'm in deep trouble. Her incredible story. That place is my nightmare. Will have you on the edge of your seat. Your homecoming was bittersweet. Who told you about your husband's affair? How did you stay so strong? I am free. No matter what you do to me, I'm still free. The inspirational interview you can't miss. Australia, March 9. I had a chance to have a chat to Melissa Doyle, who is now uh, part of the Sky News team. Uh, we've got a long history, uh, way back in the very early days of her very successful run over at Channel 7. I had the chance to uh, join us in the man cave and ask her about what is it about, uh, well, this joint and the opportunities that uh, bring her back to telly where she belongs. What tempted you back to telly? What tempted you back to, to, to oh. doing this as, a, as an idea? Because no doubt everyone's on the phone, do this, do this. Storytelling. So, yeah. It's what it's all about. There are so many extraordinary stories out there and that's what I want to do is interview people and share their stories with all of us. I'm happy doing that forever and ever. So And it's that thing where form. you've done it for a long time. Yeah. Um, when you sit down with, with, with Kylie Moore Gilbert... Um, what sort of research do you put into those one-on-one, -on -one world exclusive interviews? Because that's what we're talking about here before we even get to, like, tell us about the process. I would like to think I could read every single thing that I can possibly find. And it's a balance between, you obviously, you know, I spoke to her prior, predominantly to make sure that she was comfortable and that she trusted me and, and we had a relationship and I wanted her to feel um, secure in sharing pretty harrowing details so huge amount of research but then on the day as you know better than anyone you just have to go where the interview takes you and I think if you sat there with pre-prepared questions and and she gave me some information or took us down a path that we didn't know about then the worst thing I could do would be jump to the next question it's just you've got to follow it along as a natural conversation and that's what it feels like she was really wanting to talk about it, wanting to share. A lot of times you talk to people that have been through something pretty traumatic and it's quite cathartic for them and, and it's almost that notion of, of I've just got to get this out and let everyone hear about it and then they can move on to yeah. a degree. So she really wanted to talk. Nothing was off limits. There was no um, parameters around it. She was really keen to share everything. Were you surprised about the areas that she didn't just let you in on but she let you relive for her? Yes, and that's another thing that the way I would word the question sometimes, you think, oh, I don't want to ask something that might trigger a memory or bring her back to a place of trauma. You know, I feel like that's such a responsibility to do it delicately. So there was a few times where I would say, look, if you don't want to answer this, then please don't. It's up to you how far you want to take it. But she was open. There was nowhere that she stopped. There was nowhere that was off limits. But... It was very interesting. I feel as though she still has to process a lot of it. She is still in that place where she's dealing with a lot and you get the impression that a lot of it's boxed up and popped here while I deal with my life coming back to Australia and in time she will get to it. Maybe it'll be little bits at a time, but she is an incredibly fascinating woman. She is so well-educated. She's intelligent she's well spoken she's thoughtful she's gentle and she's soft and yet she's just so strong and when you look at this beautiful delicate woman in front of you and you think of what she went through hmm. i don't know anyone that could endure that how did you feel about how she answered are you a spy 
How did you feel about it? How? Straight up. Right. She, I asked it straight up. There's no other way. And she answered it straight up. There's no other way. Did you believe her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In terms of the trauma of going through the Iranian legal system, as best as we can call mm -hmm. it that, um, do you think there's any other way that she could have played her time going through the system that would have got her out of it faster? So going through the system was out of her control. The way it was dealt with was handled by powers that be that were way above and in different places to where she was. So she certainly expresses her thoughts as to the way that it was handled, whether it could have been done differently, what could have worked, what couldn't, who was sort of told to say what and not say things. Mm -hmm. um, she is quite of the opinion that it was handled in ways that maybe she would have done otherwise. Mm. But, um, you know, hindsight's a great thing. But she also explains to me why it was done in a particular way. And the, the main thing it came down to is I was just so intrigued as to why. You know, why mm. would this happen? Why would a, an academic in a country like Iran be plucked from the airport and bundled into a car and whisked off to prison and held there until a trial can begin... Um, and and does this happen? Could this happen to anybody? Could this happen to a journalist? Could this happen to so many people in a field that could potentially touch on delicate matters? And that was, yeah, it was pretty alarming. I, I know uh, that all of it's hard, but all of it she's open about. Yeah. Um, how hard was it for her to talk about the fact that her husband, oh. that this was falling apart while everything else was yeah. happening? She is an incredible woman to watch when you see her body language. She holds it together. She is so strong. She has no, does not want to speak in any way disrespectful, still likes Irani the Iranian people. It's, you know, they're, they're not the enemy. She is so graceful in everything. We get to that point and you just watch her. It, it broke my heart. You know, she's gone through so much. She had 804 days in, yeah. in jail, you know, seven months in solitary. I do not know how she goes through it. And then to come home and get the news that she did and her life unfold from that moment on in the way that it has, um, she is incredibly graceful. But, you know, it even felt a bit awkward asking that. It feels so personal, but at that point... She shared everything, so yeah. I, you know, I felt like I knew I knew her, and there was nothing off limits. But well, say, so this you know is the thing. Right? So, so after you've after you've done big world exclusive interview, where you've asked all the things that everyone else in her life has tried to ask her, but she's probably blocked. Do you then feel this weird thing where two years from now you'll be texting yeah. with her, like, hi, how are you? Does she know more about your life yeah. than somebody would normally who was a guest on yeah. any of the TV shows over the years? I have this habit of keeping people. I adopt them. <laughs> and particularly when it's been a story that is traumatic, yeah. I cannot simply just go, thanks very much, and walk away. It doesn't happen. So God the two it. of us went for dinner that night, and we had a couple of glasses of wine. That was a, a good <laughs> thing to keep talking, and we have stayed in touch and will stay in touch. And awesome. I think she needs support. She needs people in her corner going forward, cheering her on. Whatever she does next will be extraordinary. And if I can be one of those people, then I feel that would be just an honour. So there's no way you can walk away. She's a beautiful lady and uh, she is amazingly good at a gig. I'm so pleased that she's part of what we're doing here at Sky News. As we rack up those uh, world exclusives, those big interviews, those big documentaries, must-see stuff, all the ones, including yours, Rowan, is at skynews.com.au. Next Tuesday is where Escape from Iran, the conversation with Kylie Moore-Gilbert, will take place with the great Melissa Doyle, exclusive to Sky News.